Okay, so this next part of the video, I'm going to show you how to take a photo and turn that into a normal map. Now, the best way to uh, show this is to actually use a rock texture. And I'm just going to go onto Google and find the uh, find a rock texture. So this is the one I've picked. So I'm just going to right click, copy image, and then I'm going to create a new image. I'm going to make sure it's 1024 by 1024. I'm going to call this rock texture, original name there, and click OK. Change this to this. So I'm going to Control V. That's going to copy it in. I'm going to stretch it a little bit. Now, don't worry. I'm going to show you how we can solve that in a minute. So it's quite a noisy texture, but this should work. I've tested it, so it does work, and it looks all right. But first, we're going to have to actually make some changes to it, because there are some little errors in it that we need to tidy up. Now, to begin with, we want this to tile on itself. So if it was outside of this space, so beyond 0 and 1, so 0 and, no, sorry, zero and 1, we want this to tile so we can actually uh, tile this across quite a big distance on the model. So the way we do that is if we go into filter and go to other, offset. And because this is 1024 by 1024, we want to offset it by 512 by 512. So for example, if it was 512, because it was 5512 the image size, we'd offset it by 256 by 256. And we keep working downwards that way. So click OK. And you can see it's split it into four quadrants. Now, if we were to put this, we would see a massive seam in this. So, one of the tools that I found that's really useful is something called the patch tool, which is found here. And if you right click, come down here and you click patch tool. And what you do is, you make a selection like that, and then find an area and drag along to it. Control D to get rid of the selection. And you repeat this to get rid of this line, which you can see here, if you zoom in closely. And I do it in little sections. Now, if I do a big section, it sometimes works. And this is a texture that it kind of works with. But I don't like doing that, so I'm going to do it in small sections. Now, you can use this tool in conjunction with um, the clone stamp tool, which is up here. So clone stamp tool. So for example, I don't want that there. So I can hold alt, select my selection, and then just paint over it like that. Let's keep doing this. And I'm just pressing control D to deselect. This is very quick and very rough. To be honest, nine times out of ten, that kind of works. Okay, so if we go filter, other, offset again, so it's back to normal. Now we're ready to convert this into a normal map. So what we want to do is, we want to make sure we still got Endo open, and we want to go into the options menu here and go photo normal presets. Now this gives us a lot of stuff to choose from. Loads of materials. If we click on the arrow here, go down to rock, we have a load of rocks. Now, this is experimental. Try different things to make it look the desired effect that you want. So, I'm going to use flat cliff to begin with. So, click active. Now, this is going to create as a new document, which is important because we don't want to overwrite the texture that we just made. Now this texture would probably need a little bit of light values changing, a little bit of uh, desaturation maybe. It needed some kind of editing, but because I'm just showing you how to create a normal map from it, um, we, I haven't actually done that for this. So again, just like any of the menus, we can change the size of things. We can add more, add more detail in it, chiseled detail. We make it a bit more noisy. We can make less chips, more chips. 
you can have a play around that until you get your di desired effect. And I'm just going to control S. And now I'm going to save this as a normal map. Targa. Always work in Targas. I've already got this kind of prepared. Um, so rock normal, uh, not NRM texture. Click save. Yes. And I'm going to do the same with this one. So Nina, rock there. Target. I'm going to call this ID one. Yes. You see where this is going? We're going to use 3DO to have a look and see what it looks like. So you can actually use a cube for this. Uh, if you want to change the different types, there's a sphere, there's a cube, there's a cylinder, there's a flat plane. Um, I'm going to keep it as cube for the time being. And again, I'm just going to go into here, click, find my folder, and just assign the right texture to here. And I'm going to do the same with the normal map. And there you go. You can see that we've started to add that kind of what could take us like hours to create. We've started to actually change it. And now this isn't perfect. And this is not a solution that you could use at every on every game for every platform for every developer. Every develop every developer's got their own workflow and pipeline. Endo and Dedo and Quixel Suite might not be included in that. It may be substance designer. It may be the old fashioned way of doing it, where it's high poly baking it. And most of the time it will be a lot of high poly models baked down. But this this tool here is very endo is very useful for creating repetitive patterns in normal maps. If you look at the video on their store, they have you can create welding joints with it, you can do this and that. There's a lot of things that you can do very quickly inside of it. So my recommendations, I'd use both methods. I'd use high to low poly baking as well as Quixel Suite to get those really quick results out there. Um, so in the next video, I'm just going to show you how you could create a library of assets using Endo uh, to help speed up your workflow, basically.